Um, cool. So, our next speaker is um, Aaron Ellis. He's going to be telling us about how to plan the perfect murder. Oh, oh, oh Uh, so we share our world with billions of people, and it's very difficult to know how their lives or even their deaths can affect ours. Th that's why a plan is better. Uh, sorry, a strategy is better than a plan. A lot of people think they're the same thing, but they're actually very different. Many of you may have came up with a plan when you came here. A plan is sort of doing one thing after another, expecting it to always go your way. I'm sure the plans you used to get here tonight weren't exactly as you thought. A strategy, however, is trying to get what you want while other things are trying to stop you, whether it's people, events, or whatever. A big part of a strategy, you diagnose a problem, come up with a solution, turn it into actions, and be flexible about those actions. Now, Double Indemnity is one of the greatest films ever made. It's about a sort of restless insurance salesman who's persuaded to murder the husband of a sort of beautiful, dangerous woman. And for me, the film sort of highlights the difference between a plan and a strategy. Walter comes up with the perfect plan that would see the two of them get away with the crime and the cash. So the plan comes in a series of steps. They'll trick the husband into buying accident insurance. While he's signing documents for car insurance, Walter slips in an accident insurance policy, which pays double for killing him on the train, or if he dies accidentally on the train. The husband has a trip coming up. His wife decides to drive him to the station. Hiding in the back of the car is Walter, who waits for the signal to break his neck. Part three. Walter, wearing a similar suit to the husband, boards the train as the husband. A few days before the trip, the husband broke his leg. That doesn't affect the plan. In fact, but Walter has to sort of improvise a cast. Finally, he'll jump off the back of the train at an appointed location, which is where the two of them will carry the body over and dump it on the tracks. This is sort of Walter's perfect plan, which goes step by step if everything goes perfectly. The police conclude that the husband tripped over his crutches and broke his neck, and they rule accidental death. Ironically though, Walter's plan made no room for accidents happening. Firstly, a passenger speaks to him on the train. Although Walter managed to keep his face hidden, he still gets to talk to him, and he has to shake him off before he can fall. Now, this passenger is tracked down by Walter's boss, who says that although he didn't see the man's face, he did seem to have a younger voice and seemed to be taller than the husband. Walter luckily isn't recognized as far as he's concerned. But the most important problem is if the husband knew he had accident insurance, why didn't he put in a claim after he broke his leg? This is the thread that Walter's boss pulls at that kind of unravels the perfect plan. The insurance company decides not to pay out on the claim and wait for Phyllis to try and sue them and then use that as an excuse. And the pressure he puts on them, I think, except for me, shows the difference between Walter and Phyllis. Phyllis is the ideal strategist. She understands the problem she's in. Her husband hates her, and if he divorces her, she'll be left with nothing. If he dies accidentally and has no insurance, he'll be left with nothing either. Her solution is to find a way to be financially secure if he somehow disappeared. And then more importantly, she's flexible in how those things come about. When Walter first turned up at Phyllis's house, he just wanted to renew the husband's car insurance. But Phyllis, as soon as she saw him, spotted an opportunity to get away with her plan. So flexibility is key when it comes to strategy. Now, when Walter finds out that Phyllis may be having an affair with the stepdaughter's boyfriend, he comes up with a new plan, which is he'll kill Phyllis. The boyfriend is suspected of being the accomplice on the train, 
and then he'll do away with the problem altogether. Unfortunately, Walter doesn't realize that Phyllis has a gun concealed and she has a different idea about how everything is going to go down. So in the end, Walter Neff's tragedy is that his plans rely on everyone doing what he wants at the time he wants to do them. But that's not how our world works, and that's why you need a strategy, even if you're going to kill someone. Thank you.